Well, everyone, this is what a van in progress looks like. We are finishing up with a lot of the electrical, still have some stuff to put in uh, over here. Finishing panels, obviously, but have to finish off back around the door. Uh, we also need to finish off uh, up here on the other side. We're going to install some upper cabinets all along this wall. And I need to finish up. The faceplate is going to match these cabinets here uh, right underneath the bed um, and then put some finishing panels over the door. Kind of took the month of December off, but uh, we should get started on that soon here. Um, and we'll, of course, bring you any updates uh, as we have them. So this is going to be a little bit different video. We're just going to go over the electrical system that we have here in our van and what components we chose, why we chose them and uh, what we have in this van. So. Here is our electrical cabinet and we'll go over kind of every component uh, that we have in here and uh, what it is. If you have any questions or things that you want to answer that I didn't answer in this video, make sure to drop a comment below. I'll be sure to answer all of those. And what I'll do is I'll kind of show a quick overview schematic, maybe Microsoft Paint of the entire electrical system now. And then I will minimize that, put it in the bottom here and try to highlight each component uh, as I talk through it in this video. The DC to DC battery charger, we have the positive and negative leads hooked up here um, under the battery. That runs down, uh, down through, you can see right there, uh, right next to the frame. And then that actually runs into, right up into here, it runs underneath this doorstep up through here. Uh, you might be able to see a few wires in here and then it's gonna snake right back into our cabinet where our battery connection system is. So you can see here where our positive and negative from the main battery on the car runs up into our DC-DC battery charger, which helps to smartly charge our battery while we drive with about 20 amps max so that is a safe region uh, you think your average iphone charger will pull a little over two amps that's about 10 iphones charging at once and that helps to trickle charge this battery while we drive without overloading the alternator on this car uh, that then comes out goes down to our negative and positive bus bars which are directly tied into the main battery so it can charge it i have a Positive and negative lead here going to, again, these main bus bars over here uh, so that we can read the uh, voltage on the battery as we drive. Uh, the passenger can pretty easily see this on the side of the cabinet here. Uh, these main positive and negative bus bars then go into this main negative bus bar that I have here, as well as this box I'm using for positive power. It has separate fuses in it for the lights, our pump, and anything else we want to add in the future. Now, one thing that we wanted to leave uh, open here that we could do pretty easily is room for, in the future, adding an exterior shore power or solar power. And then for the battery, well, this X2 power battery from Batteries Plus Bulbs, it's a marine battery. It is uh, 133 amps, and that's what we ended up going with. So we found this to be the cheapest option that we could go with currently that gave us a very good bang for the buck, uh, gave us a lot of power, gave us everything that we need, but we didn't want to break the bank. We didn't want to be spending thousands of dollars on our electrical system. If in the future we end up using it more or we find that we really wanted shore power or that we really wanted solar, we didn't want to have to be replacing any of these parts. Uh, we wanted it to be something where we could add on to it and we didn't feel like we have wasted money here on the electrical, but we did want to go with kind of a bare bones minimum setup to begin with uh, that, that, that was good, but we didn't break the bank on it. We also have a few things up here for electrical. We have a switch here. Uh, you can actually tie the DC, the ba DC battery charger strictly to the ignition. So anytime the car is running, the battery's charging. I did not want that to be the case. I didn't want the I want to have a little bit more control over when the battery charger came on. So this switch uh, is tied to ignition, but it's a switch in line, which means that if the switch is on and the ignition is running, it'll pull the DC DC battery charger. Uh, however, if I'm driving and I don't want the battery charging in the back, I can also cut that off if need be. 
There's also an additional switch here that it connects to my backup camera. And that one is tied to an always on 12 volt. It allows me to cut the backup camera on uh, whether or not I have the van running. Uh, so if I'm in the van sleeping, we hear something going on at night, we can always flip it on just to check on what's going on outside. So under here we have our main cut on cut off switch. For the lights, we only have one positive running from over here um, on the positive side for the lights. And that wire runs up the wall. You can see a bundle of negative wires, one for each light, as well as two positive wires. One is power going to the switch and one is uh, coming back from the switch. Those run all the way across the ceiling, tie into this bus bar, which is the positive going to the switch, as well as coming out of the switch back up into the bus bar. And then all of the positives go to each individual light from this bus bar. They run down the wall here, and that goes to our switch, which allows us to turn all of these lights on in the ceiling. We also have additional wires running from in here to two 12 volt power sources, which are on the side of the cabinet just by the bed. That allows us to charge phones or electronics or anything else that we find necessary. And we decided to go with that uh, versus an inverter because it's much cheaper, a little bit safer, and 12 volt car outlet to USB plugs are very common, really easy to find. Uh, and really all we charge is cell phones in here because we're not typically taking this van out for much more than a week and a half to two weeks at a time. Lastly, the final thing that we have uh, connected here is our ceiling fan. And uh, truthfully, this shrouding has been off lately. Uh, we ended up finding a small leak around our fan uh, after we installed this and it had been sitting here for a few weeks while we had a lot of heavy rain. Uh, so I had removed this to let it dry. I need to do a little bit of sanding um, and patch up a little bit back there where we have a little discoloration on the ceiling from the leak. Uh, but this runs off of the 12 volt battery that's back here in the van. And we can get about uh, two to three full days of use out of that um, on this battery, depending on how much power we're drawing from other sources. Uh, pretty safely. So it's a very low power fan. Uh, looks good. Gives a little bit of light back here. Um, enjoyed it so far, but uh, we'll give an update on that sometime uh, with a little bit more full review uh, once we've actually used it more. The only other wiring we've done in the van is that we actually installed a brand new radio in here uh, that's just a little bit more modern. We don't have the shroud on that yet. And the old radio actually has a common ground for all the speakers. Uh, was tired of waiting on the part. It was on back order to be able to install a new radio in that system. So I actually ended up just buying uh, some cheap speaker wire off of Amazon. It was $15 for a whole ro roll of it and ended up rewiring all the speakers. So you also see speaker wire running in here. Uh, the stock speakers were actually pretty good. They weren't cheap paper speakers that had blown out or anything. So we're still Still rocking those for the time being, but uh, that is all of the wiring we've done. So I think the ceiling ended up turning out pretty nice. Uh, the lights actually give a ton of light here at night. If I was going to change anything or update anything in the future, I might think about giving two or three switches uh, for these lights so that I had different zones or different amount of lights or somehow putting them on the dimmer. Um, but they turn out pretty well, and if we just need a little bit of light, we can always put a flashlight in here that, or a cell phone light that we can just look around uh, if we don't want to turn on all the lights. They do draw very little power, so there's really no concern with the power draw on the battery in here.